I now recognize Ranking Member Sorensen for his opening statement. Good morning. Thank you, Chairman Lucas, uh, for holding today's hearing, uh, returning to the moon, keeping Artemis on track. Uh, I want to welcome our distinguished witnesses. Uh, thank you for your time and your expertise and for being here today. Um, I was not alive uh, huddled around the TV for Apollo 11, um, but my parents watched that landing. Um, I'm the son of an aerospace engineer and a meteorologist uh, with a deep love of, of science. I know the profound impact it has had on our country and on our world. Uh, when I look up in the night sky, I, I, I wonder what's up there. I want us to know what's up there. Today we're examining NASA's Artemis mission. Uh, the program, separated into several stages, is designed to bring humans step by step to the moon and beyond. Artemis will inspire the next generation, strengthen our aerospace industry and international partnerships, and demonstrate capabilities needed to eventually send humans to Mars. Last year, I was proud to host NASA astronaut Dr. Kate Rubens in my district in Western Illinois. Dr. Rubens spoke about her excitement uh, for the upcoming generation. She believes that, uh, and I spoke with our witnesses earlier, that the first humans that will set foot on Mars may be in a first grade classroom today. What an exciting possibility for the next generation, for our children. The Artemis I mission was an important first uncrewed test that sent the Orion vehicle thousands of miles beyond the moon before its return to Earth. Artemis II will test additional systems as it brings humans around the moon. And Artemis III will land humans back on the lunar surface. The difficulty of these missions cannot be underestimated. Last week, we learned that NASA is delaying the Artemis II and three missions by about a year. I stand behind NASA in prioritizing safety for Artemis, and I look forward to gaining further insight into the delays and any related costs. Artemis requires a sustained national investment. In a 2021 report, the NASA Office of the Inspector General said, quote, NASA is projected to spend $93 billion on the Artemis effort from fiscal year 2012 to 2025, end quote. And that's even before we land our astronauts on the moon. As authorizers with oversight responsibility, this committee needs to ensure that those investments are made wisely. This hearing provides a timely opportunity to get both an update on the progress and an understanding of the pressing issues of the Artemis program, including does NASA and Congress have an appropriate level of understanding of the cost of key Artemis systems, individual Artemis missions, and a sustained lunar exploration effort? What is the critical path for returning humans to the moon, and what is the plan for addressing all of the challenges? How would a fiscal 2024 budget at enacted 2023 levels, or even a cut below the 2023 levels, affect this program? How are NASA and its partners addressing risks, and how will risk be communicated to the American people? In closing, Mr. Chairman, I want Artemis to be safe and successful. Artemis and Moon to Mars are tremendous opportunities and of importance to the United States and the rest of the world. America's international leadership and engagement in the Artemis program and the Artemis Accords will promote peaceful, safe, and sustainable exploration of the moon and other celestial bodies. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time, Chairman.